good afternoon, colleagues, friends, and my panelists, my esteemed panelists. TVET has long been seen as an agent of youth empowerment, equipping youths and adults for employment and entrepreneurship. It is important that the key strategies are, are engaged for maximizing access to TVET for youths and young adults. This, this session seeks to engage young people in recommending strategies for improving access to skills, the approach will be in the form of a focus group session where we have over 10 panelists at this time. The discussion will be facilitated in an open manner. So I will move to the first question. I will pose in questions. The first question, how important is skill development to you? And I pose this to any one of the, the panelists who would want to take it on. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarita Mitchell, and uh, I'm going to speak on this question here. This is one of my truths, and in my opinion, skills development is important because it is not just about a skill, it is about a lifestyle and the society itself on a whole. And without skill development, in my opinion, majority, if not all, our livelihood would not be in existence. Because, for example, our chairs that we use, you need carpenters to make those. The desks that are here, we have to use carpenters. And um, for construction workers, for this building, the Jamaica Conference Center, certain topics that are spoken here and views that are you know, spoken here, we wouldn't actually bring these topics into a church building. So without construction workers, there wouldn't be certain buildings or areas where you can share different views. Without hairdressers or barbers, you wouldn't have persons who, you know, who have self-esteem issues and they don't know how to properly put their hair together. So you would definitely need barbers and hairdressers to do that for them. So without skill training and still skill development, our lives would be non-existent in my own opinion. All right, thank you. Well said. Good day, everyone. So skill is very much important to me. You know why? Because this is my only way out. There's no other option. I understand that, I heard something today where it says that skills pay the bills, and that is an absolute truth right there. I know that, you know, having the education, it is good, but my mom, she taught me to be balanced. To just have this and don't have this is being imbalanced. And yet my, my parents, they encourage me to be balanced get the education, get the papers, but make sure that if the papers fail, you are not on your face. So because of that, I am here to make sure that as a young person, I grow up in a balanced way. I not just know the books, but I know the works as well. And that is important for me. Well said. Mr. He, Junior. Yes, sir. Um, what are your plans for your life and how can skill development help you with that? All right, sir. My plan is to become an outstanding barber because that's the field that I'm in previously. As well as an entrepreneur that can make changes and develop new techniques in the barbering industry, not by only using technical skills, but also soft skills like taking initiative, being more professional, valuing diversity and adaptability. Um, being a team player which will help me in making myself even more marketable. Well said, sir. Anyone, what are some of the skills that you're interested in? We'll jump on that one. Well, for me, is um, anything that relates to electrical construction, 
uh, medical in today's society where we have been impacted by COVID. We have been lacking nurses, doctors, and facilities that may uh, um, encompass these areas. And I think those are the most important skills we need today. Thank you. Mr. Burke? Skills that I'm interested in. Um, I look at things differently, so I'm mostly thinking critical skills, th critical thinking skills such as skills in regards to mathematics, programming itself, things that can generally get me to think. I, I value those more than practical skills. Now, there, even though I do value technical or critical thinking skills more than practical skills, I still think that there needs to be a balance, just like what you said, that if there is no area or if there is no need for critical thinking, we must have the practical or be able to be practically enabled to do practical stuff. And that's, what I, that's my general thought on what I think is most interested in, the ter in terms of skills, just critical thinking, being able to do stuff critically, productively, and efficiently. All right, what about the employability skills? Employability skills, yes. so soft skills. I do believe that that is a very well-needed skill because even though I may have the um, critical thinking skills are the, being able to do stuff practically if I don't have the soft skills to communicate with my colleagues, boss, or anybody to convey the data that I, am, that I have generated or such, or to convey an idea, it will not, they, then there won't be any point, from my perspective at least. So I do think that soft skills, being able to convey information correctly, being able to understand a situation in the, in the work environment, being able to talk to your colleague just like a normal person while still being professional, I still think, I do believe that that's a very important skill. All right, thank you. And I will now ask Mr. Smalling, um, are you interested in training? Yes, good afternoon. I think the real question is, when does that training start? <laughs> no, it is the case where uh, I would like to touch on a point that Mr. Engleton, the JDF member, um, touched on recently. He was saying that there is a gap also that their students go through high school not knowing what they want to do. Now, if it's the case that Hart can focus most of their efforts in the high school level, for instance, workshops, career days, um, events like that, where they can bring certain equipments, materials, gears to, um, get, yes, exactly, get, let the students get a feel yeah, of uh, a, a, a yes. skills that are offered. And uh, also I'd like to touch on a really sensitive point. I, I realize that the Heart Institution has a certain stigma attached to it that you need to actually go to university right after sixth form or fifth form, that is not the case. If it was the case that I knew that Hart did a course like automotive, I would apply it a long time ago. Bear in mind, bear in mind, I am actually a student of UTEC. I did not finish. However, that didn't stop me. If it was the case that I knew that art, uh, there was a school like Jagas, I did sixth form, I went to um, UTEC to the engineering. My first course, bear in mind, I'm a bright student. I was in the bright class, right? <laughs> so it is the case where I went to um, UTEC. Uh, the course, I remember the course I did, thermodynamics. I will not forget that. I went in the class and it was like Spanish. And I'm telling you, things like that, it's not specialized. I didn't see any wrenches or gear wheels or a generator. But they're, they're throwing all of these stuff in my face. and. I am brilliant at math. I got a distinction in CSEC for mathematics. Now, my first test at UTEC, the 10 was missed. I was, you know, expecting to get 100, but the 10 was missing, so you can do the maths on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I would just like to finalize by saying that um, 
I am interested in training and if it was the case that Hart was presented to me in high school without the stigma because people always pushing the college, 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 college. But if it was the case that Hart was a sixth form college, I would, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> this is the real world. And these are real stories. And it is life. And we need to, we need to believe and we need to nurture and support. At this time, I'm gonna ask Ms. Lawrence. Ms. Lawrence? Yes. Again. All right, what are some of the challenges you have with getting into training? The challenges getting into training, I would say none. Heart is so accommodating. They are willing to take anybody at any time. Being at Garmix Academy, I can see where a push is made to take in as much students as possible every time they get it. So I didn't have a problem, any at all. So if I apply again, just, you know, <laughs> just take me again, you know. <laughs> but Heart has made it very easy for us as young people to achieve success. Thank you. Just to add to that, I'd say one of the challenges, as he had mentioned before, the stigma attached to hard trust. Some people are saying that, oh, you may not be educated enough or you didn't pass other CXCs and so on. So some persons, they don't want to go just because of that, because they don't want the label. Some persons, they don't have certain information and what I really appreciate now is that they say up until level four is free of cost. So they don't have any more challenges yeah. as to say, oh, I cannot afford this. So we need to reimagine, think of what is important, not what other persons may say about us, but what is truly important, the skill that we need. The skill is the most important part. And with skill, you can do anything. You can have a flexible lifestyle. You can have your own business. You can work for somebody, anything. Just go and get the information that you need. All right. OK, um, not to be long, but just to also add to this as well, not to add to this question. Um, as it relates to challenges, um, one of the challenges that a few students at our institution, at the Hart College of Beauty Services that we face, is that um, heart, they provide all the, the materials that we do use, but those materials we cannot carry at home. No, training, it doesn't just stop at school. We have to continue training at home. So if it is that um, the heart institution can partner with as much beauty stores as possible where us as or not just beauty stores but you know overall we're stores other that are aligned with different areas we can align with them so that students can get discounts so that we can afford the items that we can purchase them practice at home that would be great that would be very awesome all right we're getting the recommendations at the same time the aim is to solve a problem, problem solving. That's the event. So as long as we can imagine it, we can produce I can, it. I can add something. Each and every person in this room, young and old, has the ability to do something in skills development. So I don't want you to look on your age and say, well, I'm too old for this. It's too late for me. That is not the option. People always tell me it's never too late to learn something new. And I believe that to sustain life, you need to learn and you need to develop yourself. All right, All right. thank you. No, the challenges, some of the challenges we're having. Our youngsters, want to stay away from training. Um, what can be done to get all youngsters, 
everybody into training. Okay, so targeting young people, it is good. I remember we were having the discussion before and I was sharing that we need to go to the foundation. Uh, I believe um, in a presentation today, somebody said about if the building starts shaking, everybody going to think about the foundation, right? If it's strong enough. And when you look into the home, the home is what makes up a community. It will build the perspective of the whole world. And the parents are the foundation of the youth today. They are the one who generate the next generation. And trust me, the stigma that's going around is not really coming from a dark place. It's coming from ignorance. And I was very surprised that that wasn't one of the gaps discussed today, an ignorance gap. They don't know about heart. It is very serious. Okay, well said. And on the same and, question. Right. Because growing up, you know, for the mature folks, I know that when you, when you saw skilled people, you know, them look drag, them never have no money, a hand to mow, them don't know if run a business. This is what they grew up seeing. And they just want better for their, their child. So they're like, no, go to a doctor. Go to a lawyer because they are the ones who always have the money, right? Lack of understanding, lack of management. So no. If we can shift a person's mindset and perspective towards what heart is all about, and just a side note, I'm very happy that I am here. Coming here today and listening to these long discussions, I was wide awake. Trust me, I, I, I grew to love heart a lot more because today I was able to see what heart is truly all about. Because I didn't know. I did not know. I will defend you guys when I come off of this stage. Because I know. All right. All right, so you have to move to another. I, you have to give one I of your. I know and your understand colleagues. what her true mission is. And I was saying it to my principal during lunchtime that a God set up this from morning. A God set up this. And if we are able to reach to the parents, let them see and know what heart is all about and how it can help their child. Then you are able to get to the heart of the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Right. All right, so the same this question. Is this is my point. Okay, so one of the ways that we can reach young people and get them to, in, to be interested in training is by... We can... We can reach out to young people through social media sites such as TikTok, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Also, we can use like past students' testimony, just hearing from them how going through heart has helped them to be successful. I think that's one of the way we could use. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, also, another platform that can be used is YouTube. So, like, I'm not sure if you guys know, like, persons would come on YouTube and have series where persons would talk about their experiences. If Heart has so many young people who have been through it, right, and are success stories, why not create an initiative where we have these said persons come on board to spread the word, right, to know that they're not alone, they're not to feel as if they cannot do, because guess what, when I see that person over there, and I see them get through the difficulties, and that through heart, they have overcome all of these challenges, even having their own businesses, right? Because of heart. So that's another great initiative, as well as starting from the kindergarten section, as small, as little bit as they are. I believe a speaker spoke and said, um, between the ages of three, or three years old, I think, I believe, that that's the time where they pick up on things. So why not go from that stage onwards, incorporate it in the schools, and even in the so-called traditional high schools, right? Because they're mostly focused on the theory aspect. So when they leave high school and to go into the working world, 
there is no, there's no practical, right? They just come in there blank. So I believe that heart TVET needs to implement themselves as early as possible so that people would be able to know and recognize the benefits that can be brought to them into the, the working world. Just, Let's call a TVET from birth. Yeah. I just want to because as early as early childhood, we start with TVET. So, um, right in on her point, we were both discussing that um, there are so many persons who graduated from Heart to share their success story. So we can name it from now and create a Heart profile. We can take that same feeling yes, where persons come on and, and share their testimony. So it would be really good. There's one person I really want to share their testimony, and uh, they're actually doing two fields. Started out in nursing. Hi, good afternoon again. Well, in, 20, in 2009, I attended a heart institution in Mandeville where I did nursing. And I got jobs in that area because I had the practical to it. And given that, you know, they saw the big heart on the certification, they said, that, OK, you had all the skills and everything like that. As opposed to in 2012, when I attended the Crown Professional College and did an associate degree in social work, after doing that, applying for jobs, nothing. Many years after that, applying for jobs in social work, nothing. I'm home doing nothing and I spoke to my husband and because my husband is also a skilled worker. He does AC technician for over 16 years and he's doing pretty well. He even works here. So he actually pushed me because he's realizing that I'm now focusing on doing hairdressing at home during the whole pandemic and before the pandemic to be exact. And I practice here, persons come to my house and I do hairstyles for them. And he actually even pushed me and said, why you not just go to the heart and do it? And trust me, I've started February and it's like I've started from last year. And this is actually my second or third, you know, outing and it feels College didn't do this for me. College never made me come Jamaica Conference Center before. I've never had and I've never spoken in crowds like this through college, but the Heart Institution does this for me. And to finalize, I'm going to speak on my husband who does the air conditioning, which he got certified through Heart. I'm not going to give an exact figure, but compared to him and a teacher, he can make five times more than what a high school teacher makes per month. So doing skill training is a thumbs up for every, everybody. All right, thank you. So I'm just going to add this little point. Uh, so it was mentioned that um, to get persons into training, you can get to them by social media, by their parents. But totally, I think to really get persons you should really focus on the businesses. Now, it was mentioned before in a previous presentation that persons, when they graduated, they don't really have the technical skills. Now, that's where heart exceeds. Heart basically turns someone from nothing to something. I've seen it for myself. Currently, I am doing mobile application development. I knew a person who was in the first batch of this course. At that time, I was completing an associate degree in management information system, so I was doing a bit of everything, but I was morally interested in programming. I've seen this person who started from not knowing anything as a little bit as arrays, which are the sets, to knowing more than me. Now, that says a lot because then I could just say that, all right, in terms of me completing this degree and him, He's more job ready than I am because he's morally 
Tarek, he's more really practicing in a very specific area than me that's being more general in, or at least getting the basics of every little thing, right? I personally think if you can, if heart can work directly with businesses to encourage businesses to take more of heart personnel who are looking for more practically enabled persons, that would be better for the society. All right, thank you. Let me just say, in a nutshell, that what I'm getting from this is that skill development is important. And for our future, and for, and for industry to be sustainable, we need trained workers, competent persons. I want to on behalf of the organizers of this um, focus group session, along with JATVET, I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you for your participation and contribution to this important discussion on improving access to skill development. Your insight, ex experiences, and perspectives have been invaluable to our understanding of the challenges faced by young people in accessing skill training and education in Jamaica. We have insightful discussions. We had insightful discussions on topics such as the role of TVET in addressing youth unemployment and importance of partnerships. We also, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to our panelists and facilitators to share their experiences and ex expertise with us. Your contribution has been critical to the success of this event. I also would like to thank the Heart Trust NSTA Trust, the University of West Indies, the Jamaica Teaching Council for sponsoring this session. Once again, thanks to you for your participation and contribution to this event. We look forward to continuing our work together to improve access to skills development for young people in Jamaica. Thank you.